This is the best empirical multiple linearized regression model. And again, Voltaire, yada yada. Okay. Dedication to uh, my great uh, nephew and niece and my grandson Theodore. That's the next generation in our family. And uh, uh, the history of the linearized models. If you remember, when HP launched their stat packs, they presented linearized regression, not just linear, but they gave you uh, four models, linear, exponential, logarithmic, and power. You had two variables, x and y, and linear values and log values. Two to the power, two is four. Uh, when the 41C came out with its somewhat rich memory where you can actually store data and all that, uh, I offered, I wrote programs for the uh, Corvallis library that offered eight transformation for each variable. So you had 64 models to choose from. And then, oh, and then I also wrote for the 41C, uh, best linearized models for three variables. So uh, that's uh, a three to the eighth, so you have 512 models to select from. Of course, you had to let the machine run its course. Uh, as the number of the, the regression variables and the number of transformations increases, the number of tested regression models explodes, is the key word, into the hundreds, thousands, and tens of thousands. Uh, originally, many, many years ago, I started using arbitrary enumerations for the sets of transformation, like one was linear, obviously, two was square, or uh, two, uh, three was log, uh, four was uh, reciprocal, five was square root, and so on. It didn't matter because the loops, the, the programs like for the two variables had nested loops, and they went through all the values and tested every model combination. But in the last few years, I switched by from using these numbers as arbitrary selectors to actually represent powers for the variables. With one exception, zero, I said, if you see zero, that's the log. Other than that, if it's one, it's linear, two is square root, 1.5, it's, that's the power. Uh, because this approach, allows the uh, regression variables to offer different curvature. You have a straight line, uh, a, square, a square is concave upward, square root is concave downward, and so on. So as you change the powers, you're changing the curvatures uh, of the variables. Uh, and also in, in mind in this project, support for cross products of two or more variables with each with its own power. So that adds a lot of flexibility. I used the Excel because it was very convenient to work with the uh, worksheets. You see the visibility, you could input, paste data, you could see intermediate results, and of course you can see a wealth of final results at a glance. So I used the Excel VBA to take advantage of uh, Excel's, uh, I would say built-in is that the VBA and analysis tool pack you have to install very easily. And that has a, a built-in multiple regression program, and also it generates the ANOVA table, the analysis of variables. Okay. okay, because I need some of the results from that table. Uh, the basic concepts, we have uh, dependent variable Z and independent variables X and Y. And we have the general simple model it's a linear combination, fz of z, fx of x, and fy of y, where fz, fx, and fy are power functions, raising these variables, and the second equation puts the form in a more explicit uh, manner. And these powers, in search for the best models, have a minimum value, maximum value, and a step value. So you're marching you know, from one value, and then you repeat that uh, over and over. And each change in any of the powers uh, give, uh, uh, tackles a, different, a slightly different regression model. Uh, 
For example, here I have all the variables at the first equation raised to the minus one, so it's the reciprocals. In the second equation, uh, x, I take x as linear. In the third equation, x and y become linear. Then halfway, all the variables are linear, and then I switch to uh, squaring z and then z and x and then all the variables. This is just a sample, you know, uh, for how things uh, change regularly. And these changes are in integral, but they don't have to be. Uh, a slightly more advanced concept, intermediate, I would say. Again, we have z and then versus x and y. And now, if you can see, oh, sorry. Uh, there's a cross product term, uh, d times hx of x, hy of y. And so the fz, fx, fy, hx, and h are all powers in ranges of value. And then the second equation gives more explicit form. Again, to search for uh, these models, uh, these powers go from a minimum value to a maximum value in certain steps. And these are examples of uh, the last model with, say, they're all reciprocal and gradually I'm changing, you know, like the third equation, they're all linear and then they start to be, uh, start with z and x as squared and then uh, the y is squared and so on. So that kind of gives you, this is just a drop in the bucket of what the program can do. A more advanced uh, concept is, you have the dependent variable t with independent variables x, y, and z. And again, we have terms with single variables, then a, a term there with the x and y, two variable cross product, and the last cross product is terms with x, y, and z. So uh, uh, it, it, it can become more complex. So you think of each power from P, T, P, X, P, Y, and so on, as a collection of rotating wheels or nested for loops. And with each con configuration of these values, you're dealing with a different uh, regression model. Uh, I wrote the uh, Clement II project in the middle 80s when I wrote my first book with other people. I had uh, the Clement project, with that, which I wrote in Turbo Pascal, and it did insane, crazy uh, 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 modeling. And actually, I had problems uh, re reduplicating, translating the Turbo Pascal into Visual Basic. I said, let me make it a little bit more systematic and a little bit more sane and, and, and manageable. Uh, so I ended up with, uh, and Clement was the name of my father that was in his honor. So this time, I wrote three programs. The first one, searches for the best empirical model uh, given ranges of transformations for the various variables, minimum, maximum, and step. This baby can take a good time if you have enough data and enough transformation, especially if you make the steps smaller. You, you, can, you can be dealing with tens of thousands of models, you know. The second one is it, it, it randomly searches for the best empirical models in a given a range of transformations. Uh, now, you said how, how much uh, random search you do. If you can do it quickly, you can really let the machine run for a day or two. But it's, it's searching and in, in, in you give it the, what is called the search or trust region, and it searches in that at random. It doesn't do any steps. And then the last one is, the searches for the best empirical model using a simple hill climbing. It basically has a, a, a trust region, and the median point is its anchor point. And if in that region it searches for a better point, then that becomes the median, and it shifts. You know, and it keeps doing that until it fails to produce a better uh, model or runs out of the number of iterations that you have uh, prescribed. Uh, you can download the apps from my website, or I think the whole thing is, should be on, uh, on the uh, uh, conference. Uh, each of the three programs uh, automatically launches a, a main form. 
this way, I, I, um, this is easier to deal with than telling you to look at the listing and go to this subroutine first. And, you know, I decided to make it easier. After I pretty much finished the project, I said I need a, a better GUI. Each program has a slightly a different menu form, but that gives you the idea. There's these long buttons and they're numbered, one, two, three, whatever. So the first one, it says build regression model list and perform calculation. Bam. So you have your data ready and everything. I'll show you with the sheets and you say go. Or you can break that down into two phases, build a regression model list only. Then you can go look at it, see what is it doing, and can even edit it at your own risk, of course. Assuming uh, the edit, if, if happening, is done well, you can click the third button. And then, of course, you, you can examine the ANOVA table regression model for any model in the sheet. You select that sheet and uh, you tell it, uh, you click, and it will give you on a separate sheet the ANOVA table. Uh, you can redo the regression model for the the last, the best model that you got. Uh, because when it's done, it's, it's done the last model the, in an arbitrary fashion. And if you want more details about the best model, then that's the way to do it. Uh, here, remove training uh, punctuation characters. The heart of the program is to take the variable names and replace them with their current, uh, current values associated with each value and then raise those to the powers. The problem is, I'm not including this in this uh, presentation, but you can include functions. There's a, the manual uh, describes a trick. And for it to distinguish, let's say you have a variable called TA, and you're using a function tangent. Uh, if, you don't put, if you don't make TA like TA dollar, it's going to translate the TA in tangent replace the first two letters with the value of the variable TA, and then you're going to have a trailing N and a runtime error. So the dollar sign is, uh, helps it to distinguish between variables and functions when those are used. Very important. And then uh, the last one is this set default normalization. You can normalize your data on to, in two ways. You can first take the logarithm of it if the, the range is very wide, and then normalize. I normalize from one to two, so in raising powers, I don't have very small or very big uh, stuff uh, still. Uh, each program has the switches sheet, and that's where you, it's very important. For, uh, these have uh, switches values and comments, what they do. And in the program, the, the, the stuff in column A, that's what you, actually find in the listings, these are the name of the constants. So the first one is the resort uh, sort column, usually column A, and I will show you, that's the one where you have the adjusted R-square values. The column B will have the F statistics, you can use that to, uh, to sort the data. Uh, say it in uh, the, the switch, if you turn it on, the program becomes chatty cat. It will in the prompts, it will tell you the progress, like 10%. This way you can let the machine work while you're working on another machine, and it will tell you the progress. In fact, I had, I would sit downstairs, and the machine in my office would say, 30% done, 40% I mean, 40 done, and so on. Uh, you, by assigning zero, you make it quiet. Of course, sometimes it also, you get a prompt, a message box, and it'll say, you know, like, are you ready to, you know, you, you have the stuff, uh, your data and transformations ready and all that. Uh, uh, there's a normalized data, that's a switch, whether you, you want to normalize your data, yes or no. The appended character to the variable names, that the dollar sign, that we append to variable names temporarily, and when it's done, uh, it'll ask you, if you're done, done, then it will remove those. Uh, and you have, for example, the maximum errors to stop. It's 15, sometimes you can even make it three. After three errors, you want to say, okay, I want to know what's going on, because it, it's possible that it can do 
tens of thousands of models, so you don't want to, you know, have to interrupt and break it, uh, the program. Let's see, scale power. Uh, if you're using integer power and integer increments, you're fine. But if you're using fractional powers, like uh, by half, it's best to, to scale everything by, say, 100. And this way it will not uh, make an error in raising the correct power and all that. But you do uh, rounding. Uh, and max results, uh, 50. The, uh, giving you thousands of results is simply insane. 50 results, you probably will look at the first five, you know, and, and figure, you know, how, uh, uh, how the, the solutions are degrading and all that. But I, I put the five here, so. The data sheet is very simple. The very first row has the name of the variables. I chose here simple variables, but I can use uh, multiple, uh, multiple letters. Uh, the way it replaces the variables, it sorts the variable names. For example, you have another column with a variable called ZZ. It will, try, uh, it will replace ZZ first, the longer variable names with their values, before going down to the shorter name. So there's no mix-up. Yeah. And then the other rows are the simple the, the, the data you put there. The models list here, uh, there are two versions, I'll show you. The first column is the variable names. As you can see, uh, Z appears, uh, well, Z is the dependent variable, so it only appears once, but the other ones, TP and V, appears multiple times. That's because they could be either in a separate term or in a cross product term. And the from power to power gives you the range, power step, and then TME, the mathematical expression, term mathematical expression. Now Z here, for example, I'm going from one to one in step of one, meaning keep it linear. But all the other variables, whether they appear on a, on a term on their own or not, go from one to two in step of one. I don't need to scale here, so my scale should be one. Uh, in the column E, when it's empty, it means uh, this is, this is uh, 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 independent. Until I get to row six, and I say equals A times A7, meaning go back in, in column A, take the variable A6, uh, multiply it by the one in A7. The, the next row is, has nothing. Uh, tells the computer that I have a cross product of only two variables. But on, on row eight, I multiply A8, A9, A10, meaning the variables in, 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 in in rows 8, 9, and 10 together, and then the other two rows are empty. Uh, I'm doing that because I can, uh, while I'm reusing T, the T in one cross product can have different transformation ranges. So it gives it an independence. And this is the, the power in, in a number system can be adapted to do math and trick functions built-in functions, uh, modular functions, and the, the um, uh, manual explains how to do the trick, some tricks to do to be able to, uh, to transform, you use uh, sine, cosine, whatever. Uh, the manual on the hardware? Yeah, it should be, yeah. Uh, the, uh, this is an earlier and simpler model sheet here. It's the same as that one, but Row six, I simply put that, uh, an asterisk to say, multiply the variable in that row with the one next to it. And then the one, <coughs> the one next to it is, is clear, meaning just these two. But in row eight, I have asterisk, and in row nine to meaning multiply the variable in row eight by row nine by row 10. The ro row 10 is empty, so it knows, uh, uh, what uh, what it's doing. And the normalization sheet is easy. You have the first row shows the variable names, and then the switches, the Y, yes or no switches, normalize if you want to take the log values first. And Excel will fill in the values in rows four and five. 
if you use minimum maximum because you will use you will need that if you want to reuse the formulas here's a, a partial list of the models the first one is all the variables are linear and then you can see a, a variable t becomes squared and p and then t and p and so on so the it's very the, the, uh, gradual variation in the power increase and change. Uh, here's a sample of result. The first column is the adjusted R square. Since uh, all the variables have the same number of terms and are using the same uh, n n number of data points, uh, I sort by that. I can also sort by F statistics. And then you have the following columns. It shows you the variable names and the powers. Previous prototypes showed you the index of the power. I said, yeah, but for a cross product term, that's going to become confusing. So I decided to write the variable name and the powers, so you can see. Then you have coefficient zero, the intercept, and then the other coefficients for the various terms that appears. And that's typical for all the other programs. It uses the same format for the result sheets. Yeah. Uh, there's a scratch sheet where it does the calculations and the scratch sheet has three areas. There's the data column. This shows a snapshot of uh, the first row of what the variables are and their transformation and then the values for that. And here's the ANOVA table. This is to, to the left. You have the ANOVA table that shows you the R square then the uh, uh, sum of squares, I mean, and then the third group is the coefficients of, the, of regression, standard error, t-statistics, p-value is very important because if it's more than 0.05, that term is under question that if, if it's relevant. And sometimes these, uh, if the term is high and the actual value is very low, it really says you, you don't need this term, you can knock it out. And you have lower, uh, lower and upper uh, intervals, 95%. Uh, I don't know why um, Excel repeats it twice. Uh, and then finally, the predicted values. Uh, Excel produces the column with the predicted values and residuals, and my program adds a y ops, meaning the uh, calculated and percent error, just to give you a little bit more a sense of how much error you're dealing with. Uh, and uh, the random search process uh, is uh, very similar. It, it searches in the uh, region you specify just at random. This one you have the ability to specify few, uh, low, moderate, or high number of iteration. You, you're more in control here. Uh, uh, okay. And here's the uh, model sheet. Now it's interesting, you go from power, uh, each one has a range from power to power. The delta is the absolute value below which if a random power, the absolute value of a random power is generated, you take it as zero. Uh, and then again here I can specify that on row six that I want to do cross product term in this case, one cross product term uh, with, uh, with random variables. And it does these random variables, calculates this, generates this first, then it performs the, the, the calculation. So it's not dynamic, it's like it's preset. And this is what it has on its mind, uh, the values. And again, here's the same kind of output, R square, F stat. And then it states the transformations, and then it states the intercept and coefficient of regressions. Uh, the optimum search uh, version, that actually can be the quickest. It's the simple hill climbing, like I said. Uh, now, each variable has three powers, low limit, median, and upper limit. You specify the first and the last. The median, it takes as just the middle of these two. And so it has the centroid, it considers, you know, that's the initial optimum point. And then it, in that range, it searches for a better point. If it finds it, that becomes the centroid and it moves everything around the new centroid. And it does that repeatedly 
until it fails to get a better uh, uh, adjusted R square or it runs out of iterations. And here's a simple, you know, uh, again, uh, the first uh, column, the variable names from power to power, step power. That's used for the, the search. Each iteration does a search. And you can use also, this one has two cross product terms, one with two variables, the other one with three variables. Uh, and then this is, this is, a, I took a snapshot while it's doing the, 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 the search. Uh, And this is after the results. Uh, so this has the freedom of movement a little bit, unlike the first two where you specify the range, the trust range not to be valid. This thing can, can move a little bit on its own uh, within, within uh, the number of iterations and within the ability to find better solutions. And here's, again, uh, it looks familiar. Uh, and in this case, it does the best results. What it does, the first row is when it did the first cycle. Second row, it, it jumps from 4, 0.45 to 0.93. It's like, oh, I found something better. And then to 0 0.990, and then to 0 0.917, and then to 0 0.994. And then it, it, the, the, the voice will tell you, stop iteration because there's no improvement in R square. And so these are the, this one took five iterations. It didn't take a whole lot. I tried it the other day and with some other data and uh, it took, it took a, a little bit more like 20 minutes, but it gave me something similar. And that's all. <laughs> Any questions?